What's going on everybody, Rob Peary here, and today we're going to be discussing two coffee species that pretty much rule the world. One of these coffees is everyone's favorite, and the other gets treated like the red-bearded stepchild. Let's dive in. Although there are more than 100 species of coffee, I think there's like 124 to be somewhere exact, the two most popular are Caffea Arabica and Caffea Canephra also known as Robusta. Now, Arabica has many different types of varieties, as Typica, Bourbon, Geisha, Ketimor, and many more. Conifera also has a few varieties. They have Robusta, Erecta, and Naganda, which is actually grown in Uganda. But to be clear and to mitigate any confusion, I just want to make it clear that Conifera and Robusta are kind of used interchangeably in the coffee industry. The species itself is actually Arabica and Conifera, but, you know, everybody just kind of says Robusta, for the species as well. In this video, we're gonna keep it as Arabica and Robusta, but just know it is actually Conifera. That makes any sense. Hope it does. That deserves a coffee break. Now, Arabica and Robusta, they differ in taste and growing conditions to the sugar and the caffeine content. They physically look different, and one is actually a lot more expensive than the other. So let's define them both real quick, and then we'll roll into some differences about both of them. So starting with Arabica. Arabica is a species of coffee that was probably the first to be cultivated. Uh, it still makes up a majority of the coffee that's consumed, anywhere from 55 to 70 percent, depending on the source you look at. Now, Arabica coffee was first cultivated in Yemen like centuries ago, uh, but it did not originate there. It actually originated in Ethiopia which is why they call Ethiopia the birthplace of coffee. That's where pretty much all the coffee that we consume kind of came from that little region. So Arabica gets its name from the Arabian Peninsula. It did not originate on the Arabian Peninsula. It was brought there. Just wanted to make that clear. And then there is Robusta. Now Robusta finds its origins in Central and Sub-Saharan Africa where it literally will just grow wild, which Arabica will grow wild too. Robusta was discovered around the late 1800s, and Robusta makes up about 30 to 45% of the coffee consumed. Now, Robusta is actually growing in market, share, demand, whatever you want to call it. Now, this is as of 2022, so these percentages may differ like, you know, five, 10 years down the road. Now, Arabica and Robusta may have originated in the same area, but let's discuss some of the major differences between them. First of all is the taste. The taste, although subjective, is very different between the two. Arabica has a higher sugar content and has like that fruity, sweet, tangy type taste. You know, you can get some really good flavors from it. Where Robusta is kind of woody, spicy, uh, it can be very bitter, and some will say it even has a rubber taste. Now, I don't know who the first person was who actually like tasted rubber, but uh, you know, thanks for taking one for the team. I appreciate it. Now, preferred taste can be completely different across the world, uh, depending on the cultures. Most will add milk or some type of sugar derivative to Robusta coffee and actually can create a very enjoyable cup. To make Robusta palatable to, you know, somebody like me, I have to actually change the roast profile. I may have to change my entire brewing recipe. Um, I may have to change the ratio. I may have to change the grind size. I may have to change the flow rate. I may have to lower the brew temp. And I actually may even have to just brew it in a completely different device. And actually think about that, that could be a different video, you know, best way to make Robusta coffee. May do that one. But with that being said, don't allow the negative press of Robusta to stop you from experimenting with it or getting it to try and roast or, or brew a different way or anything like that. Companies like Coffee Bean Corral and Sweet Maria's and a few others, like they all sell small quantities of Robusta and also some other species that I haven't talked about yet and we'll get into a future videos and and I'll link those companies down below if you want to go down there and check them out. Um, Coffee Bean Corral is one that sells Robusta. Uh, I know they have a Vietnam. I think they have an Indian one now. So yeah, go down there, check them out if you want. Get you some Robusta and just experiment, dude. The next major difference is the growing conditions. Arabica grows at a higher elevation than Robusta. Robusta grows anywhere from sea level to around 800 meters, which is about 2,600 feet. And Arabica grows anywhere from 800 meters to 2,500 plus meters. Now, pests and insects are more prevalent at the lower altitudes. And Robusta is actually you know, very well adapted to withstand that where Arabica really isn't. The Arabica tree is smaller than the Robusta tree. Uh, it's six to eight meters versus 10 meters for Robusta. Now again, 
as far as like growing conditions, climates, different places, these are just numbers. As far as like cultivation goes, out in the wild, they can get pretty big. The yields also differ as well. Robusta averages anywhere from 2,300 to 4,000 kilograms of coffee per hectare, where Arabica averages anywhere from 1,500 to 2,300 kilograms per hectare. Now, hectare is 2.47 acres, so kind of give you a little math there. So the largest producer of Arabica coffee is actually Brazil. Now they're not exclusively Arabica producing. They, they produce some Robusta as well, but the largest producer of Robusta is Vietnam. Now again, that is as of 2022, things could obviously change a few years from now if, you know, a country like the Congo takes over and it could get crazy. The coffee industry could just woo. Another big difference is the caffeine content. Arabica contains anywhere from one to 1 to 1.5% caffeine, whereas Robusta contains anywhere from two to 3% caffeine. So literally about double what Arabica has. Now, as we kind of discussed in the cultivation portion, some insects and pests and stuff like that are deterred because of the caffeine content in Robusta. That's what makes it able to withstand more of the pests and the bugs and also some of the diseases that may affect the plant. Uh, the next thing is sugar content. Arabica contains 60% more lipids and also twice the concentration of sugar than Robusta. This reason alone plays a big portion in why most people would prefer Arabica coffee over Robusta. They like the sweetness of it. They like that taste. It has some of the oils and stuff coming from it. Now the extra sugars and lipids and stuff like that that are in Arabica, and that, that's, that's a huge portion of the roasting process. This is where the chemical reactions come from, the caramelizations, the amazing aromas of the Arabica coffee. And for that reason, Arabica is usually going to be priced at a much higher rate than Robusta coffee. And depending on the region and the quality of that cup, I mean, that gap could be huge. It could be anywhere from a $2 Robusta to a $1,500 a pound, you know, Arabica coffee. Another difference is the uh, bean appearance. Arabica and Robusta both look different in their cherry form, their green coffee form, and also their roasted form. It may be just the process and the quality of coffee that I've purchased that, uh, that is Robusta, but I've never seen it to be super clean or, or uniform or consistent or anything like that. Whereas if I buy some, you know, a Costa Rican or a Burundi or a Kenyan or something like that, it's usually very consistent. You know, the quality is always there, very minimal defects and stuff like that. Robusta beans are said to be more round, like the green and, and the roasted, but I've roasted them and honestly, uh, they've been long shaped as well. So I think it really just depends. I'll give you a quick example of what they kind of look like and like how similar they can be. Now, remember, this is just one sample out of hundreds that are out there, so don't base too much judgment on this one little sample size. So those are the main differences between Robusta and Arabica. As coffee crossbreeds and production spreads further into countries like the Congo, new coffee varieties and possibly even new coffee species could be discovered. Now I'll be going over some of these in future videos. I uh, definitely want to touch on Excelsa, Liberica, and Stenophella. Stenophella? Now look, if I butcher any of these words, guys, I am sorry. I'm from the South. We have a hard time speaking English, although we speak English, so it's kind of tough. So yeah, definitely going to be looking to make some of those in the future. I want to go into kind of some more of the coffee history. I'm going to be working on that video. I want to put a lot, lot of detail into that one. But uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Hit me up in the comments if you have any questions. If I butchered any facts, I'm sure somebody down there will let me know. And I look forward to learning from you as well. A lot of times like y'all bring up things in the comments that I, I didn't realize. So I appreciate any feedback that you give me that may correct anything that I may have said wrong. Thanks for tuning in. Try some Robusta. Experiment. And just enjoy the coffee journey, dude. Please subscribe. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this and I will see you next week. Like.